While the Queen Regent and the Hand were trying to deal with the King's marriage and the financial crisis, Reyna Targaryen had set up her own court far to the west. After the death of her first husband and brother, Prince Aegon, and being forced to marry her uncle Maegor, it is thought she returned to Fair Isle for a more peaceful life. Although she did remain bitter about being passed over for her younger brother Jaehaerys for the Iron Throne, at Fair Isle, a place of refuge for her during the war, she had set up her own court, with her new husband by her side, much to the dismay of her mother, Queen Alyssa. She did not approve of Reyna's marriage to Andro Farman, someone below the blood of the dragon, and was deeply hurt by her exclusion from her daughter's wedding. The hand Rogar Baratheon was also furious that she had done this without the crown's leave. Andro Farman was the second son of Lord Farman, and was a very odd choice, well below a former queen. It was said he was handsome, with pale blue eyes and long flaxen hair, but he was also nine years younger than Reyna. Even at his own father's court, there were those who called him half a girl, as he had a gentle nature and was softly spoken. He failed as a squire and had never become a knight, not having the martial skills like his father and elder brother. Sending him to forge a maester's chain was considered, until his own maester told Andro's lord father that he was simply not clever enough and could hardly read or write. When asked about her choice of husband, Reyna had replied that Andro was simply kind to her. Andro's father had also been kind to her, offering her refuge on Fair Isle after the battle beneath the God's Eye, when King Maegor was demanding her capture. Some suggested the widowed queen took Andro for her husband to repay his father for that kindness. It said that Lord Farman loved his son despite his failings, and that the match is more than his son could ever have expected. But another possibility, first put forward by Lord Farman's maester, maybe offers a more firm assertion that the queen found her true love on Fair Isle, not with Andro Farman, but with his sister, Lady Alyssa. Three years older than Andro, Alyssa Farman shared her brother's blue eyes and long flaxen hair, but they were unlike as siblings could be. Sharp of wit and sharper of tongue, she loved horses, dogs and hawks. She was a fine singer and a skilled archer, but her great love was of sailing. The wind our steed were the words of House Farman of Fair Isle, who had sailed the western sea since the dawn age, and Lady Alyssa embodied them. As a child, it was said that she spent more time at sea than upon land. She sailed her own boat around Fair Isle at the age of 14, and by the time she was 20, she had voyaged as far north as Bear Isle and as far south as the Arbor, often to the horror of her Lord Father. She spoke of her desire to take a ship beyond the western horizon to learn what strange and wondrous lands might lie on the far side of the Sunset Sea. Lady Alyssa had been betrothed twice, once at 12 and once at 16, but she had frightened off both boys. In Reyna Targaryen, she found a light-minded companion and the Queen found a new confidant. Together with Elaine Rice and Samantha Stokeworth, two of Reyna's oldest friends, they became inseparable. So Franklin Farman, Lord Mark Farman's eldest son, dubbed them the Four-Headed Beast. Andro Farman, Reyna's new husband, was admitted to their circle from time to time, but never so often to be taken for the fifth member. Most tellingly, Queen Reyna never took him flying with her on Dragonback, on the back of her dragon, Dreamfire, an event she shared frequently with the Lady Alyssa. But in fairness, it is possible that the Queen invited Andro to ride, only to have him decline, which would fit his nature. It would be a mistake to call Reyna Targaryen's time at Fair Isle as idyllic. Not everyone welcomed her. Even on her own distant isle, there were poor fellows, angered that Lord Mark, like his father before him, had given support to one they regarded as an enemy of the faith. The continued presence of Dreamfire on the island was also creating problems. Some of the islanders took pride in having a dragon of their own. Others were made anxious by Dreamfire, especially as she grew larger. Feeding a growing dragon is not easy, and when it became known that Dreamfire had produced a clutch of dragon eggs, some feared that the isle would soon be overrun by dragons, devouring sheep and cows and men alike. Even within the walls of Lord Farman's castle, Reyna had enemies. Chief amongst them, Lord Mark Farman's heir, Sir Franklin. Sir Franklin had fought in the battle beneath the God's Eye and taken a wound there. His eldest son had also died in the battle and he'd been left to bring the corpse home. It had seemed to him that Reyna showed little remorse for all the grief that she had brought him, a little gratitude to him personally. He also resented her friendship with his sister. Instead of encouraging her in what he regarded as her wild and willful ways, Sir Franklin thought the Queen should be helping find Alyssa an appropriate marriage. He also resented that the Queen and her circle became the centre of life at court. Sir Franklin and his father were pushed aside in their own halls. None of this was a problem for Reyna. All the time Mark Farman was Lord of Fair Isle, which was over a year later, Mark Farman died at age 46, and Franklin was now the Lord. On the day after his father's funeral, he summoned Reyna to the Great Hall and commanded her to remove herself from the island. He told her to take her dragon, her friends, his little brother, but dare not take his sister with her, who would marry a man of his choosing. Franklin Farman did not lack for courage, his maester wrote in letters to the Citadel, but that he did lack sense, and at that moment, he did not seem to realise how close he stood to death. Reyna had fire and blood in her eyes. 
Many feared Reyna would burn the castle to ashes. Instead, Reyna was too proud to linger longer, where she was not wanted. She departed for her isle that very night, taking flight for Castle Rock upon Dreamfire, after instructing her husband and her companions to follow her by ship. Lyman Lannister, Lord of Castle Rock, had sheltered her before, and Queen Reyna was confident that he would welcome her again. Andrew Farman, Samantha Stokeworth, and Elaine Royce set out the next morning, together with more than 40 of the Queen's friends and servants. Alyssa was with them as well. She had no intention of remaining behind. When the Queen's party reached the docks, they found Sir Franklin waiting for them. He was adamant on not letting his sister go. The new lord had only brought half a dozen men with him, and he had seriously misjudged the love the small folk had for his sister, particularly the sailors, shipwrights, fisher folks, porters, and the other citizens at the dockside. As Lady Alyssa confronted her brother, she demanded he get out of her way. A crowd gathered around them, grown angrier by the moment. Oblivious to their mood, Franklin attempted to seize his sister by force, whereupon the onlookers rushed forward, overwhelming his men before they could draw their blades. Three of them were shoved off the docks into the water, whilst Lord Franklin himself was thrown into his ship's hold, a fresh caught cod. Issa Farman and the rest of the Queen's friends boarded their ship untouched and set sail for Lannisport. Lyman Lannister, Lord of Castle Rock, had given Rainer and her husband Aegon the Uncrowned refuge when Maegor the Cruel was demanding their heads. His bastard son, Sir Tyler Hill, had fought with Prince Aegon under the God's Eye. His wife, formidable Lady Jocasta, had befriended Rainer during their time at the Rock. Just as the Queen had expected, they welcomed her now, and when the rest arrived, a lavish feast was held in their honour. An entire stable was given over to Dreamfire, and Queen Rainer, her husband, and her companions were all assigned regally appointed suite of apartments, deep in the bowels of the rock itself, safe from any harm. There they lingered for more than a month, enjoying the hospitality of the wealthiest house in all of Westeros. As the days passed, however, the hospitality grew even more uncomfortable to Rainer Targaryen. It became apparent to her that the bedmaids and servants assigned to them were spies of Lord and Lady Lannister. One of the castle's scepters asked Samantha Stoteworth whether the Queen's marriage to Andrew Farman had ever been consummated. Sir Tyler Hill was openly scornful of Andrew, whilst doing all he could to get close to Rainer herself. Lord Lyman began to express an unseemly interest in the three dragon eggs Rainer had brought with her from Fair Isle, wondering how and when they might be expected to hatch. His wife, Lady Jocast, suggested privately that one or more of the eggs would make a fine gift should Rainer wish to show gratitude to House Lannister for taking her in. When that ploy proved unsuccessful, Lord Lyman offered to buy the eggs outright for a staggering sum of gold. Queen Rainer realised the Lord of Castle Rock wanted more than just a high-born guest. Beneath his warmth, he was too cunning and too ambitious to settle for so little. He wanted an alliance with the Iron Throne, possibly through marriage between her and Sir Tyler Hill, or one of his true-born sons, a union that would raise the Lannisters up past the High Towers, the Baratheons, and the Valarians to be the second house in the realm, and he wanted dragons. With dragon riders of their own, the Lannisters would be equals of the Targaryens. Rhaena knew she could no longer stay at the rock. 